Welcome, welcome, welcome to Producing in Pandemic. We are recording to the cloud for asynchronous accessibility of other participants. I'm going to stop this music I've had playing in the background. This is what happens when you Google the words chill hip hop. Uh, this is apparently chill hip hop radio. That was a lovely background music. Thank you to YouTube and whoever makes that happen. Um, I'm going to hit stop sharing. I've just been sharing my screen that has our communication agreements on it. Um, generally, we run a real relaxed space. So be on camera, be off camera, participate at your level of comfort. Um, if it's possible, we appreciate if folks can be on camera, if they're uh, telling us a story or sharing something from their practice. Um, as always, we begin with our field-wide survey. So that's going to be um, an invitation for folks to introduce themselves. You're going to say what your name is, your gender pronouns, where you're coming from, what your practice is, and then share something that you've either been discovering or a challenge that you've been experiencing in this field of producing in pandemic. Specifically, we've been meeting since March to uh, on a weekly basis, just to touch base, say, hey, this is where the field is. This is where we're at. This is what we're learning. This is our growing edge. And these are the things that we can exchange with each other. Today, I have specifically invited a bunch of beautiful human beings from Clubhouse. And I'm hoping that many have arrived so they can share their practice with us. I'll be, I'll be sharing my own observations, but we really prefer to have a big room. We can have lots of conversations. We don't only have to talk about Clubhouse, but I specifically want to make sure we have some room at the tail end of this where we can invite folks if they have materials they want to share they can share screen they can share links just talk to us about their practice um deanna um thank you so much for providing some additional access services support for us um so Deanna, if you could drop the link to our group notes into the chat again we'll be periodically dropping that link into the chat because we recognize whenever somebody new enters the space, they can't see the things we put into the chat. So we'll be periodically putting that in there. We like to share power. So we want to invite you to go, please join the note-taking process with us. That's the document that gets shared asynchronously with the larger 200 plus cohort of human beings that play with us. So drop your links in there and that will allow people to um, fully um, experience and access your work. Also feel free to use the chat as a space for um, dropping links, adding questions, adding more observations. We communicate in all the different spaces. If you need captions, we have captions activated. So you just have to hit that live transcript button and you should be able to have captions for today's session. And if you have any other access needs, please um, direct message Deanna in the chat um, um, for any additional support. Um, I'm Claudia Alec, I will be facilitating our session today. Um, and I'm actually gonna ask for one more piece of support. Deanna, there's a, well, actually, no, no, I can't do it. There's a paragraph of what we are supposed to say when we introduce ourselves. If you could drop that little paragraph into the chat. I will model to begin. Oh, the last piece of business is this. We don't call on each other. I'm not gonna call on you. This is non-hierarchical. So you have all agency, you have all power. Just stack in the chat, just put your name in the chat and that will indicate the order in which you'll be introducing yourself to the space and um, I'm sharing, sharing your work. All right. So field-wide survey, Claudia modeling. Hi, I'm Claudia Alec. My gender pronouns are they, their, she, hers. You can use those interchangeably. I'm speaking to you from the land of the Ohlone people. The people are still alive. And also I'm speaking to you from a country that has concentration camps still. I'm still mad about it. I look forward to not having to say that in all of my introductions. Um, my practice is I've got a transmedia social justice practice. So it's really blended into artistic production, a lot of digital producing, as well as a social justice uh, producing in publications and and streaming has become a thing, like packaging projects for streaming platforms has actually become a piece of the practice as well. Um, my access needs, uh, we invite everyone um, who participates in this introduction, you share whatever your access need is um, to allow you to participate at your highest level um, of enjoying the space. If all your access needs are met, you just say all my access needs are met. I have a muscle disorder, so I might pull a face. I'm never pulling a face at you, but um, I got some muscles that are pulling me. So you might see me go, mm, mm. don't worry about it. I'm not reacting to what you're saying. Um, I've got... 
my coffee, about my water, and I have the ability to turn off the camera and go do something so all my access needs are met at this time. Also, access needs are an ongoing negotiation. So if they shift or change during the session, it's okay to name that as well. A visual description of myself for those who are participating in an audio only format. I'm a black woman wearing a shirt that says make good trouble, although I don't know if you can see the trouble in the shot. I'm sitting in front of a green screen that has a theater space that's in Memphis, Tennessee, with a pink scrim in the background. I have that projected behind me and a Black Lives Matter sign mysteriously floating in the background. Um, and a challenge or discovery um, from this week in producing and observing work. You know, it's always like, I'm like, oh, so many, so many. Mm. I'm going to tell this story. So y'all remember when we tried out Zencaster together and it was so messy. It was like, it felt like a failure experience, except for that was like, that's the entire point of this, of this room in this space. So it was actually a success experience. So then I produce a podcast. I want to say like a week later, and we decide not to use Zencaster. Because we recognized, oh, we're trying to do a podcast that has like 12 voices. And, and we've learned for producing in pandemic that this, this doesn't work for us. When Viviana interviewed me for her project, it was just our two voices and it totally was successful. But for the larger podcast, utterly unsuccessful. Cut to me working with Trek Table. They're really, they're so awesome. They're doing um, BIPOC queer a Star Trek podcast. And um, um, it's just been such a delight to be working with them. But I show up and they got Zencaster on. We were like, we've got this great new idea. We're going to be trying out. And it fully failed. It failed in exactly the same way we experienced our failure. Now, of course, I'm an artist on that project. They had no reason to think that the strange girl who knows everything about Star Trek would also be like, oh, yeah, don't use Zencaster. Try clean feed, blah, 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 blah. Try multi-track in Zoom. Um, so it, it did tell me, oh, when we aren't able to fully record, because we didn't record the Zencast, it was a field trip. The same thing might happen today with with Clubhouse, we're gonna go, we're gonna go play someplace. So we might, it might not be fully visible, our learnings. So the challenge, forgive me for the length of my intro, this is a little longer than we usually go. The challenge that I've experienced this week is how, how do I take our learnings and share them with other producers so they don't have to learn the way I did? <laughs> All right, check, that was my long intro. Whoever wants to go next, you go right ahead. Hi, everybody. My name is Adriana Gaviria. Hi. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. I am streaming in from the land of the Tequesta, and uh, my access needs are currently met. I will have to be turning off my camera, and I do have a doctor's appointment later on, so I will be exiting early. Um, I love this group, even though I, I can't make it all the time, but I really love uh, reading the notes, and I appreciate the um, all the input that everyone contributes every week. I am currently working with a group of people who are not tech savvy. So I'm always excited when I'm introducing folks, uh, especially older folks to technology. Um, but but it's it's uh, it's challenging because even you know even working with internet and and recording and, and, and stuff like that, it's it's I'm only you have limitations, right? Um, I am also being challenged because the last time I looked into Ninja and OBS, it was still really in, in beta. Like when Steve first, came, you know, when he first posted up that video last year. Um, and so I, I had a long time had passed since uh, I had checked into that. And now there's, you know, it's, uh, it's grown so much. So I'm looking back into it again and I had to, uh, Re, you know, I love my MacBook, but unfortunately, you know, OBS just <laughs> works better with a with a window. So I just purchased my uh, a new gaming machine yesterday, which I'm really excited about. <laughs> um, and um, yes, yeah, so I I'm always looking forward to learning about other platforms um, and then just learning from each other. Um, and I and I um, I actually really love seeing 
women enter, you know, really doing a lot of stuff in this field. It's really exciting. So that's it. Thank you. Hello, I'm next. My name is Rebecca Ennels. I use she, her pronouns, and I am currently zooming in from the ancestral homeland where the Ramatush Ohlone currently live and steward our land. Very grateful. Um, I am the artistic director and chief artistic facilitator of San Francisco Shakespeare Festival, which is evolving all kinds of practices to be um, more inclusive of a shared leadership model um, among artists, which is very cool and exciting. Um, I am a white woman with long brown hair and brown glasses, and I'm sitting in a room with a bookcase behind me and some Sandman action figures on top of the bookcase, as well as a bunch of crafting books, and I'm wearing a homemade shawl. Um, a challenge discovery from this week, um, as I was saying, we're moving to more of a shared leadership practice and really engaging with the Adrian Marie Brown philosophy in emergent strategy, which is exciting. And also as folks who've practiced this way know, it's destabilizing for people when the artistic director just says, well, I don't know, what do you think? <laughs> Instead of just telling people what to do or what needs to happen. Um, or who's going to make the or say, I don't know, because I'm actually not going to make that decision for us. I would like you to participate in the making of that decision. And, and of course, yes, you are paid for that time. And we will take the time that it needs to take. But it can be very, you know, ungrounding. So I and, and, I, and I have to get used to saying I don't know a lot and being OK with that. Um, especially right now, there's a lot of I don't know, right? Like everyone's like, well, what do you think is gonna happen? I'm like, how can I possibly know? Like none of us know. So living in that space of leading through uncertainty and leading collectively through uncertainty is a very cool place to be, but you know, profoundly destabilizing as everything that has happened in the last 10 months has been. Um, and I don't know who's after me, but I will pass it on to whoever wants to go next. I am going to invite folks to really stack in the chat. The beauty of deciding the order now, it means that we get to have less pausing in between intros, and it means we have more time for uh, exploring platforms and talking to each other. I'll jump in then. My name is Sabrina Hamilton. I use she, her, hers. I am, am coming to you from the traditional lands of the Nipmunk and the Kumtuk peoples who are and this is now colonially known as Western Massachusetts. My access needs are met. I am a 65 year old woman with straight gray hair uh, in a navy blue down vest because it's very cold and snowy here. And the light is flickering on the side of my face because I am sitting next to my pellet stove because it is cold. Um, and uh, I have, um, I've had an extraordinary uh, day and part of it is due to this group. Um, uh, a number of years ago, um, Onawumi Jean Moss, who's an extraordinary storyteller, she's won all the national and some of the international storytelling awards, um, started taking the theater workshops at the co-festival performance that I run here in Western Massachusetts has offered. Um, and out of that came her first solo theater show, um, which is about growing up in Jim Crow um, Deep South and how she came to rename herself um, Onawumi. And um, I just got off the phone with her and she's working on a new piece. And uh, she is in her, I'd say at least mid eighties now. Um, and performing live and particularly touring was really getting to be just too much. So she's made for this storytelling, this web format. And her new piece that she's asked me to, well, I don't like to use the word direct, I'm trying to decolonize that practice. So I'm gonna call it midwifing, um, uh, that I will be midwifing with her is, um, uh, is about discovering her own prejudice, discovering that she was prejudiced and that she was is grew up and has been prejudiced and has deep stories in her family from many, many years, decades ago about prejudice against gay and trans people. 
and about her realizing that this was something that she needed to, uh, to address and work on. And so we are gonna be making this piece together and part of my challenge that I throw out to the group, if anybody would like to um, help me figure, think, think through this, is how to work with an 80 plus year old woman who because of the racial history of medical treatment in the United States is not willing to get vaccinated, um, who uh, is technologically challenged, who though in her mid 80s still lives alone um, and to keep this national treasure safe and to also be able to share this extraordinary work from this extraordinary artist um, uh, with a wider world. So just thinking about how to do that, how to keep, how to make it artistically successful, yes, but how to also keep her safe doing it. Check. Thank you, Sabrina. Hi, I'm Rebecca Pingree. My gender pronouns are she, hers. Uh, I am, uh, I'm speaking to you uh, from the uh, ancestral lands of the Yuchi, the Shawanwaki Shawnee and the Cherokee people colonially known as Nashville, Tennessee. Um, and uh, this is day one of moving my quarantine to this location. The visual description is, uh-huh, uh, that's why this is scurrying. I'm like, guys, I'm in a thing. Please don't yell at me. Um, but uh, so uh, yeah, uh, I'm a, a white woman, a middle-aged white woman uh, with my uh, hair in uh, two braids. Uh, I'm wearing a, a baby Groot t-shirt with a flannel shirt over it because I'm cold. I am uh, in front of uh, two twin beds um, a window with bright light shining through it, um, and a large accordion. These things happen. Um, my uh, access needs are met, and the discovery that I made was in my transition to this place. Um, I did do a virtual two-hander as an actor for Playground for a piece that's in development, um, and it's an intensely physical piece. Um, I my theater company is Analog Theater Company, and we're a highly physical masks, puppets type of theater company. Um, so uh, I did, as an actor, do a, a highly physical piece, and I happened to be somewhere where they had a drum kit. And so I stole the stool from the drum kit and was able to like dance all over the screen and like during the like more like bits where there were supposed to be like dance numbers and things I was able to like just turn it and kind of off the cuff was able to do that and I was just like a drum school the drum stool this is like genius it's so simple but ah oh, it's just anyway and I had the most fun uh and that's uh I'm checking that I I think I did it that's me check Hello everyone, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Marvin Veloso, my pronouns are he or they. Um, I am situated on the land, uh, the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Ashinabe, uh, the Haudenosaunee, uh, and the Wendat peoples, also known as Tecoronto or Toronto. Um, I am a third year major in culture and expression at York University. And um, a visual description of myself, I am an Asian man. My hairline is a bit receding, but um, I, I dyed it, I dyed it this sort of brownish it's it's sort of green I, I tried to go for a blue but it turned out a bit copper um but i'm making it work i'm 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 not mad at it um and i'm also wearing a gray sweater that says i want more with a picture of a beach uh because i love water and i love being around bodies of water um and there's a black background behind me um, one discovery I made from, from a reading this week on community arts, um, is that, um, 
I think within this this work of community arts, uh, there is there's opportunities to complicate ideas of, of community um, and to sort of open up discussions around community arts. Um, I'm still new to to this, but I've always been interested in in sort of community art practices and engaging uh, socially motivated art practice. Um, and I and Another thing I've been interested in is uh, ideas of, of creating or, or moving toward utopia and, and collective utopias um, and sort of what that might look like when you know, we bring in diverse and, and multiple narratives together and how do we work towards that. Um, with that being said, um, all of my, my needs are met and thank you. I'm Ilana Becker. My pronouns are she, hers, and I am on the traditional lands of the Lenape people. I am a theater producer and sometime before and, and, and a little bit throughout and perhaps after this pandemic, sometimes a director. Uh, but I'm a space holder and and uh, idea amplifier. So um, I am, uh, my access needs are met uh, and I'm grateful for this space. And I'm a little nervous, I think, because I'm so excited about this space and finally being able to be here with you all and feeling so at home just seeing and meeting you all. So thank you, first of all. Um, and I'm a uh, sort of petite brunette with my hair in a little tight bun uh, with a white wall behind me on a gray couch and some bright pictures and some bright colors uh, of all sorts behind me with a Kandinsky and a not quite Kandinsky on either side of my head. Uh, I am, uh, I just took on, a, I am so, I'm grateful, I guess, a third producing gig. And it's all living on the internet uh, with, with safety and accessibility to the extent that there can be when it comes to internet ellipsis in mind. Um, and I'm wanting to make sure that, especially with this newer one, a larger task and um, in so many ways, is done with care and thought for folk safety uh, with, with um, all people's intentions who come to the table honored and heard. Uh, you know, while, while trying to figure out what that means for me too and making space for that. Um, I think there's more, but I don't think I know how to articulate it. So I'm just gonna say thank you and I'll figure it out as we go along. I'm gonna hand it on over. Okay, I, I think I'm last. So, <laughs> um, hi everyone. My name is Brianna Marshall Burnell. Um, sorry, I'm really just trying to figure out everything. Um, I am an actress, writer. Um, in the pandemic, in the pandemic, became a producer, writer, editor, did it all um, for our web series. So, um, African American woman with braids and hoop earrings, um, sitting on my bed because I actually work from home. So, I decided to sit here today <laughs> with some pictures of my family in the background. Um, all my needs are met. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's it right now that I can answer. So I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to figure it out, but I think that's it. Hello, folks. Uh, I can add something. I'm Tanya Neumeyer. I use they, them pronouns. Um, I'm also zooming in from the traditional territory of the Huron Wendat, Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabe, uh, Mississauga of the New Credit, colonially known as Toronto. 
and I'm always grateful to be here. Uh, thanks to the space holders. Uh, it's nice to be a facilitator in a space that's held, you know, not by me. Ah. <laughs> that said, that brings me to my access need, which is I need to move around and uh, have my camera off. But for now, you're seeing me as a, a white non-binary person in a black hat and collared shirt in a uh, well-lit space with some plants here. Um, and oh, I wanted to share a discovery because I was here for a good portion of, of last week, more than I thought I was able to make. And then we went to this magical thing, which I, I was borrowing the phrase that we use in one of our other sessions. Uh, but for, and I don't remember, forgive me, the name of that platform. So many platforms. Uh, the, the phrase I borrowed was Zelda meets Zoom. Um, in, and so last week, thank you, Claudia, but before, what, where did we first meet Zelda meet Zoom? I don't know. But so last week we went to Gathered Town and oh, thank you. Oh, you got this, damn Pat. So we went to meet eye to eye, totally failed, but it was a great phrase. Uh, whereas the proximity based sound in Gathered Town uh, functioned. And I was sort of curious about uh, the games that Claudia had mentioned because I work with queer and trans youth and uh, in a, a, a 32 week peer leadership program. So uh, we cover content, but process is just as important. And so having ways that are more informal to interact as we would in person, um, you know, granted games are a little bit more structured than just hanging out, but they give a different quality of space. So we built a little space and we went to town, to gather town and we played this, uh, we had been playing Taboo, but we played like this fishbowl thing, like several rounds of it. So you would have loved it, Claudia. Yeah, thanks for inspiring that. I wanted to feed that back into the space, particularly as someone who has a design brain. Um, I know I'm going a little long here, but I, I just want to say like, if we want to collectively think more about that space, I recognize that it's, it is sort of world changing in the sense that uh, for a bunch of office workers, for example, who uh, are meeting always in Zoom in a particular format, like it, it does give an opportunity not only for you know, proximity in a virtual sense and sort of bumping into one another, but I could actually imagine setting up an office and and being available at certain hours so that you could sort of wander over to someone without picking up the phone. I, I am old fashioned too, I do like that. But I, it, I just recognize all the, uh, the integrations for a whiteboard, for something more like breakout rooms, for proximity, for mapping it out and integrating games and different things that, you know, I see why it was invented and I feel like we barely scratched the surface. So I wanted to sort of circle that back to the group with gratitude, uh, check. I love that our check-in had two stories about this is an experience we had in the past producing in pandemic. And then this is how it's informing the process now. I love it. Um, I dropped links to Meet Eye to Eye and to Gather Town. I felt so bad for the Meet Eye to Eye folks because like they literally came. Like the man who like owns Meet Eye to Eye came to our session. I was surprised. I was like, oh, it's so good to have you here. Gigi, I believe, is working with them. And it fully failed with us. Like oftentimes we're stress testing the platform. So we're like, let's check it out. And then if there's something where it's like, I don't know how to do this, everything's in formation, everything's in beta test as well. Um, so it's super exciting. Um, I, so I've dropped links in there for you to check platforms out on your own. Sometimes these platforms do have some kind of a price point, but I feel like um, both of those have free have free ways to explore and use them. And Tanya, I was laughing so hard because Sabrina and I, I was attempting to put the fishbowl game. I wanted to test playing it. I really wanted to. And I just couldn't figure out how to make the game be in the space. So I love hearing that you successfully were able to do that. That's amazing. Mm. Um, before we transition into pure clubhouse conversation, um, let me pause. Did we all have a chance to introduce ourselves? Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Um, in the introductions, 
let's see, what were some of the things that were dropped? So I, I shared my story about Zencaster being a positive experience in one modality. I left a link to the interview that used Zencaster. Viviana is part of our group. So she used Zencaster successfully and it's on HowlRound and you can listen to that audio quality. But then um, I've also left a link. I'm not exactly sure how to get you Trek Table stuff. I know it's on Twitch. So I'm going, I'm going to leave a link to that so you can hear the differences in audio quality between doing a multi-track Zoom recording and then doing this, this other type of recording. They're just different techniques, different platforms. Um, let's see. Um, um, learning, learning more about OBS Ninja. Yes, yes, yes. As I said, it's... Um, we're kind of in this weird scene of everything is growing and moving and improving itself. Everything's devising. So whenever you encounter a challenge with a platform, I don't, I say, don't blame yourself. Write the platform makers a letter saying, this isn't working for me because they're, they're actively trying to make things work for us because we're now living in a paradigm where we're just all attempting to be producing online more. Um, but um, does anyone else in the, in the space currently have OBS Ninja experiences or, or faculties or, ah, all right. Um, we've got a Discord connected to this group and I know that there's a bunch of folks in there. Um, in the larger community, we've got some folks who have expertise. So we like to invite folks to, um, if you've got questions that can't be answered in real time in this space, which is usually the case, drop drop a question in the Discord and see if there's somebody else from the larger community who might who might have already found out that answer for you. Um, let's see. Um, but PC better than Mac is has been my experience for OBS. Um, Shared leadership process. We put a link for Agent Marie Brown's emergent strategies in the notes. Um, how to work with an 80 plus technically challenged um, elder who is alone. How to make this art and, and actually help her be safe. I would love for us to take just a few minutes to honor that question and see if we have any useful reflections on that. Again, before we get to the clubhouse stuff, which I'm very excited about. But how do we, how, what are some of the processes we can use to help an elder who's technically challenged living by themselves? Claudia, remember you and I were mentioning that Zoom can be like the radio or the phone. In my mind, uh, using analogies and walking someone into something really, really slowly well before it's needed while on the phone with them, like starting with what works. Um, all of those would be strategies that I would employ. And then number one, I guess, relationality, right? Like never prioritizing the technology over the connection with the person. Those would be my, my two things, slow, steady, based on lived experience and knowledge and prioritizing relationality. She does know how to use Zoom. We're actually meeting via Zoom tomorrow. So she knows how to click on a link and things like that. Um, what I'm wondering though, is um, whether um, it would be better to try to videotape it and stream it, or do we want to live cast it? Um, uh, do I want to wait till it's warmer and we can be outside? Um, do I, you know, some of those kinds of things. Do I want to uh, wait? I should be able to get vaccinated soon. Even if she doesn't, do I go into super quarantine? Like, you know, not even go to the store anymore, get groceries delivered, all that kind of stuff and try to be able to be with her in the space. But if it takes her months and months to develop this, which it might, um, you know, that's a, that's a kind of large lift. Um, so, um, but trying to think about, about live versus pre-taped or with a live chat, because we always do post-show discussions at the co-festival. So that's always a very important part of what we do. Um, so, yeah. I, I feel like we're living in this new paradigm where we can say yes to everything you just said. And like, that's a kind of an ideal model for accessibility, right? So and, and I'm, I'm going back to uh, the We Charge Genocide TV, the first broadcast that where we were, we, were, we were producing 
in the conditions of protest. We are producing in the conditions of, we don't even know if this person's gonna be alive on the day of the show. We don't even know. Like, we don't even know if this person's gonna have connectivity or an internet signal. How do we make a show like that? Um, so, so, and also there are ways to, you can have one experience that's full and whole and good and then you can use that experience to create a second experience that is different, but also full and whole and good. So why not start now? Start while you're still alive. I want to be real. We are living in the conditions of pandemic. Do it now. Do it now. Embrace life. Do it now. Um, it, 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 capture stuff now. Record it. Why not? Um, and then plan for the future. And I think you're going to want to plan for different eventualities. So maybe have a couple of different designs that you can trigger depending on what the circumstances are of the world. I was just in a, a class where they were observing that in digital, well, in they were talking about how in Western culture we're uncomfortable with silence. And I know that that is very true for digital space. Just waiting five seconds to allow folks to be like, hmm. It feels like forever. So um, I appreciate us giving ourselves space and time to respond. And also we can always do go backs. At this point, actually, let me make sure I haven't skipped anything else from our beautiful conversation. Oh, drum stool staging. I'm not can sure I ask one more question, follow-up question yeah. first though? Please, yes. So Onawumi, um, is a storyteller. So best not to have a fully memorized script. We've done that before, but there, there are issues around memory at, at her age. Um, but I'm thinking it might be great to do sort of a version of teleprompter of like beats. And key thing, does anybody have any experience about how one would set up sort of a remote teleprompter for somebody? If I got her a second screen, um, if, I mean, just uh, ways to, to scroll for her so that she doesn't have to scroll. Um, would I, you know, what are the logistics of how I would want to do that? Haven't we heard in the space? Oh, go ahead, Elena, first. Um, well, it just uh, might be too many jumping jacks and too many pieces, but the thought of you know, I, I came into this room and I used two devices at one point. I switched from one to the other. And so I wonder if your your Zoom stuff has the ability, and if it's not too much to ask, that you might share, you know, have her sign in twice and share your screen with the script on her phone, and you can move it there. It's a little bit of gymnastics. So <laughs> she doesn't have a smartphone. Then there goes that one. <laughs> but I could bring her an iPad, I think, potentially, yeah. and set it up for her so that she doesn't have to move to look at it. Um, the other possibility that works similarly that I've done before in meetings is a, uh, a Google Doc, a shared document. That's that the you best could way to yeah. for her. Thanks. I forgot about this group has actually talked about that. Okay. And, and then highlighting in color what's already been done we talked about. Got it. Thank you. I don't know that tactic. I love it. Thank you for sharing that. This little stand was like 20 bucks, right? And it's adjustable. So you can use it for an iPhone or an iPad. Um, and you can get literal transcribing programs or not transcribing, but um, uh, captioning programs or Teleprompter, teleprompter programs, that's one. There are several teleprompter apps that you can get for your iPad. I was actually just having an exchange on Twitter about this because there was an, um, a, a, an artist who had, um, who had some memory issues, right? She gets the gig, she goes to do the show, they don't have a teleprompter. And she's like, how do you expect me to do this? And they're like, oh, we're just gonna feed the lines to you. And she's like, what? So it took eight hours to record. It should have taken four hours, but it took eight because she couldn't remember. They'd be like, say this, blah, 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 blah. And she'd be like, okay, blah, blah. 
remember the rest of this. Um, and then we ended up having this long exchange about how cheap and easy and fast is it to have teleprompters. Back in the day, we literally did it with, um, you printed the script off on paper in large type, and then we would use a Quaker oat, um, oat can, and then we would just roll it that way, right? Um, you can do this remotely using one of those apps and you can set it up for them, it would require going to the space. It's a thing. Oh, hey, Rebecca, do you want to um, repeat that out loud? Happy to. It's exactly what you're saying. But I'm trying to remember what Ryan's app is called. And he's homeschooling. So I can't ask right now. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, he's got a free app that he started to set up when he started to get auditions. And he was, he's got two of the exact, like the same stands, like one with his Phone, which he uses as a camera because it's a better camera than the computer and then he has the iPad going and so he can kind of get the eye line right so he doesn't look like he's switching screens right we've all seen that yeah. um but that's actually harder than it sounds because I remember he was filming me I had to do like an artistic director's address and he got it set up for me and to get the eye line exactly right does take an in-person person to come in there and test it with you mm -hmm. so and I'll try and find out what the, what the app is called, but it was free and he just uploaded a, his Google Doc or whatever in there, his whatever the, his agent sent him and turned it into a script that would roll, scroll at the speed that he wanted it to. Well, um, I feel like that these are future conversations we can have at a future date too. We might invite some folks in and figure out what are best practices. Um, I know I shared with y'all my adventures in directing a, a, a TV series remotely, which is actually really different than directing live performance remotely. Um, uh, and, and all of these um, emerging technologies and also the ways we're onboarding people to use them, it's also necessary. Speaking of, I'm now going to invite us to transition to talk about the Clubhouse app. Y'all ready to do that? Y'all feeling good? All right. My first question is this, who in this space is already familiar with the Clubhouse app? I'm trying to figure out how 101. All right, I see some hands. I see some hands, but I see some shaking heads. Also, we're asynchronously um, accessible. So we should, we should pretend that there are people involved who are like, what's a Clubhouse? We might even want to pretend people are like, what's an app? right? So we'll slow ourselves down. I'm going to frame that I'm no expert. I'm just a user. I'm just a practitioner. I'm just a person on the app. Um, I would love it if we can uh, talk a little bit about what the actual app is, get clarity on that. Um, I invited some folks who have produced work. So I'm hoping that they might be able to share um, some of the stories and techniques and just what that's about. Um, but this is very, very casual. We're just having a conversation and talking about stuff. And also, this is not a show. We're not making a show for other people. This is a workspace for us. So if at any point we want to leave this digital space and go into the Clubhouse app space, we can try that out. But I have to name Clubhouse is not fully accessible to all of us. It's only accessible to iPhone users. Um, it's um, it's not the best for screen readers, but uh, but Thomas Reed has been uh, uh, telling me that he's making it work. So um, so we're just naming that's not fully accessible, but um, but we're excited to find out about the theater that's being produced on there. Um, all right, so I'm gonna hush. Is there somebody in the room that wants to say, hey, this is what I think Clubhouse is? Oh, I'll speak. <laughs> Hi, so um, I actually got the invite from Miss uh, Claudia about because uh, she saw me on Clubhouse. Um, so um, Clubhouse, like she said, is not accessible to everybody. It is an app um, that is on iPhone. Um, you can also get it if you have an iPad, from what I'm hearing, but the iPhone and iPad users. Um, it is a new aged type social media where you can actually interact and network without so it's like zoom without faces if that's the best way for me to explain it it's literally like um in order to get in clubhouse you have to have a special invite it's exclusive only so um if you have an iphone somebody else that has an iphone have to send you an invite in order for you to even get on the app but then sorry i have my children they're like having their lunch break right now um but the um yeah so you could get on clubhouse and you can network with um it's more of a networking tool that's what it originally started as so industry professionals would get on there um, you would have some celebrities get on there people were giving out 
um, professional advice and they would open up a room um, on the clubhouse, which allows you to have different spaces. So a room is like, um, if I want to create a space, I would pretty much like create a space where I would put a topic there. So um, one of the clubs that I am a moderator in and an admin in is called the Original Table Reads Group. And it's uh, specifically for actors and people who are trying to come into the industry as well. And so what we do there is we read scripts from original writers or TV shows or plays or movies that we enjoy. And what we have is we have a file bin. Um, so we have a URL that everybody can go to and they can either follow along or they can come to what Clubhouse calls the stage. So people with moderator badges are like green, like little dots and they're on the stage and they can invite anybody up to the stage platform, which is if you're not on the stage, there's like a hand raise button on the, and you'll be like in the audience. Um, but once you're on the stage, then you have a microphone. So the microphone allows you to speak and kind of interact and talk with one another in the Clubhouse app and kind of just, um, you know, kind of like we're doing right here on Zoom with the microphone and you you have the ability to mute yourself and unmute yourself. Um, and so with that, we read scripts. Um, it's kind of like a space. And so if you want to be connected to certain groups, it's important that when you do uh, log into Clubhouse that you put um, what the first, whatever you first want to be connected with. So for me, I say that I'm an actress, right? I'm an actress, I'm a writer, and I'm a mother. So anything that you want to be connected with first, that's what should be first in your bio, because that's how the algorithms work. It connects you with people that are like-minded. So you have the actors are connected with the actors, the writers are connected with the writers. So whatever you have first, you'll see those type of groups popping up. You can join a group, and you can listen in. And again, you don't have to go to the stage. You can be in the audience. But if you want to go to the stage, then you can click the hand raise button and then they will bring you to the stage, which then you'll get the microphone. So again, it's just more of a networking tool. Um, a lot of uh, we've done we've done uh, scripts and we've done TV shows as far as like, and movies, we've actually done productions. There was a big Lion King production on Clubhouse. Um, there was a big uh, production for, there's been other like Dream Girls. There was, um, what was another one? So people are still trying to get their, their productions going, but they have come out to be um, ways for, um, yeah, just like this. The, I mean, it's been just another way for actors to continue to practice their craft, um, network and come together with like-minded people in general um, and be able to produce uh it's like a, a way of to doing a podcast actually you know you get to it's a lot of voiceover talent on there um that's what we're realizing um so we've been able to network and create um outside of that so yes that's club my clubhouse wheel that was awesome so um yes it is an audio only chat space um, generally, and again, I'm not an expert, you enter the space and there's something that they call like the hallway. In the hallway, there's all the rooms that are happening, all the rooms where the different conversations are taking place. Um, I can get pulled into a room because I've been reminded that it's being taking place because I subscribe to it. I can be invited into a room because you're connected to folks and you can ping them in real time and invite them into a space that you're actively inside of or invite them to a space in the future. Um, one of the things that I find fascinating about the space is that there's no text communication on it. Like you can't, you can't, you can't text message someone. You have to go to another space if you want to communicate in any other way that isn't your voice. Um, there's three kinds of levels of participation. So you can be in the audience and you're listening. You have a button where you can raise your hand and then that'll bring you to the next stage. So it feels in some ways, it, cre it does create the difference and division between people who are holding the speaking space and the people who are listening. And the people who are holding the speaking space can allow or disallow folks to enter that space and participate by voice. Currently, there's not a lot of extra buttons to communicate things. So you have, you can turn your voice on, you can turn your voice off. 
you can change your profile picture and folks are doing magic with that. So Brown, I don't know, Brown, if you want to talk in, at all about, I'm going to, I'm going to tell the story of what I witnessed and then maybe you can fill in no more details. So this is what I have witnessed. I have witnessed um, auditions where folks are like, great. So go to my Twitter, um, my pinned Twitter tweet to get the, to get the um, slide or get the link that has the sides. Come back here, change your profile, pick to the character you want it to be, um, and that'll be you. I've seen productions where one person, all they were doing was being a piece of the set and like their profile picture was just something there to like give that frame the flavor of that. And maybe they would unmute and do like do a sound effect. Hmm. Um, let's see. Um, um, so the so the refresh the refresh thing that's been a thing. What's the language? It's called it's called PTR. It's pull to refresh. So you pull down your screen and that will show you the order. Normally that's just to see like if somebody has, like she said, switched their picture or if there's a special order that people want to speak on the stage so everybody can follow the same order and nobody goes, speaks out of turn. Um, yeah, so your picture is called your Avi. So uh, you click on your Avi and you change your Avi. So like your avatar. So that's what the lingo, the lingo is. It's called your Avi or you pull to refresh. Um, so, and then, so the, they will say PTR, they won't say pull to refresh, they'll say PTR, everybody PTR, or change your avies. Um, and so what that is, is literally people go to Google, screenshot the Google pic, and then they go into, they change the picture to the different characters. So we do that at the table reads as well. So once we assign roles for whatever play or production we're reading from, or movie, we'll say, okay, go find your character online, and then we'll have everybody switch it. And then when you come in the room, you'll see all these characters online for somebody reading that character. Uh, and I found that the clubhouse spaces, as you've stated, it's been primarily like a, a space for networking, but I've been, I've been returning to it over and over again because I recognized every space eventually becomes a theater space. Just give us a little time. Um, so it's been interesting to see people do like performance art pieces where they're like, I'm going to read this text and I'm just gonna read this text over time and you can come and visit and witness me engaging and reading with this text in a marathon way. Um, I'm curious, uh, I'm asking you another question, Brianna, about your practice. I'm curious about when you're, when you're doing like the play readings, mm -hmm. Are you are you recording it or is it more like a live experience that like no just, oh. yeah so um no we actually in the in the table reads is um actually cold reads we never know what we're going to read until we get in the room so it's definitely um just definitely challenging all the actors and actresses to actually um, work their craft and so we get in the room and we say hey what do you guys want to read today and we have that file bin somebody might say I uploaded this script we go to the file bin pull the script and then we say okay let's assign characters we go through some people get two and three characters depending on how many roles there are um, we assign the roles and then once we assign the roles, sometimes we close out the room and rename it so we could get more people attracted to it or sometimes we just go with it and go. Uh, and so we'll read like, if it's a 120 page script, we'll read like 60 pages. So we try to break it down and read half of the script and we're in the room for about an hour and just reliving this show and um, bringing the script to life. Um, or a writer can upload their original work and we'll read the original work of the writer as well. Uh, and you're on this space um, regularly. Like this is a regular, a regular. Yes. If we wanted to come visit. Your, how, yes. How would we come visit your this? Uh, so you would look up. Um, you would search the original table reads with Marquise Moore because that's who started it. Um, it's uh, and so we meet every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. We meet Monday and Wednesday at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. And that's Eastern Standard Time. And then um, Saturdays we meet 11 a.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, are you exclusively gathering in Clubhouse or are you gathering or organizing in other spaces? So, um, no, uh, we gather, okay, so my writing partner, she was actually in the room earlier, but she was not feeling well, so she left. Um, we have, uh, we're original writers, so we have let some of our work be, has been read in this uh, group 
and um, it's now moved. We had to do a table read yesterday for a production company. So we did a table read on Zoom. So we were able to gather on Zoom and meet one another. So it's, you know, we've kind of built a little family with that um, original clubhouse, um, the table reads group. We actually built like a little family and um, we actually like we have a, a Instagram group and then we met on Zoom. So some some of them live in Atlanta. They're trying to meet elsewhere, but it's become like a little family. Like we literally started about a month ago. Um, the original Table Reads is actually a club on the clubhouse. And that's the thing. So if the room keeps going multiple times, then clubhouse will give you a little green club at the top of your clubhouse. And that becomes an actual club. So the original Table Reads is now like a club on clubhouse. And so uh people that are following that little greenhouse will get notifications every time we come so yes and my writing partner and I have a web series outside of there um and so we were able to bring some of the castmates onto the clubhouse and that's how another the other family was built because we shot we met in um May in an acting class and we uh wrote a web series five seasons but we've only shot season one and we shot everything via zoom and um, we created a whole web series and my writing partner and I have actually never met. She lives in Atlanta. I live here. Mm -hmm. um, the other person that we cast lives in North Carolina and um, somebody else lives in New York. So we have castmates all over um, and we were, we created this great web series and we were able to create the scenario where um, it is centered around human trafficking and sexual abuse, and it's a very heavy topic um, because I am a social worker by day, um, and so I work with children who are commercially sexually exploited in my field, and so I wanted to give their give them a voice. So we speak from a victim's point of view, and so uh, the character that I created, her name is Rhonda. She's incarcerated, and so with her being incarcerated, what we did was we said, hey, let's let her have a therapy session while incarcerated, but the therapist can't come into the precinct because of COVID-19. So then we were able to create this whole scenario and whole situation. The therapist is now doing the therapy sessions via Zoom with this incarcerated prisoner. And we had our green screens, dropped everything in behind us and voila, we created this whole production, so. Yes. All right. I cannot Google fast enough. So please drop your links, drop the links, drop the links, drop the links. Um, because we need to figure out how to get to your web series. Yes, I will. But I love the story of uh, we never met in physically shared space. We actually connected using digital platforms to manifest something. And you had to make these really creative choices that, that fuel the story. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, in terms of, I'm returning to Clubhouse, and also I'm going to just name, I'm probably, we like to go about, we go between an hour to 90 minutes, depending on um, uh, what, what we're filling the space with. So I am going to be closing us down in the, in the next 10 to 15 minutes um, to allow folks to go to Clubhouse if they'd like to, because I've got a I got a couple of invites I can share. Exclusive, what does exclusive mean? Um, but returning to the clubhouse question of content, um, I named that I'd experienced some people reading stuff like, uh, like I'm doing a marathon reading. I missed the production of Antigone. Um, there was a gentleman who did a full production of Antigone um, on Martin Luther King Day around that time period. Um, were you, have you, have you witnessed any of the musicals at all, Brianna? Which, which one, could you just tell me a little bit about what you found successful or challenging um, experience? Yeah, so I've witnessed uh, Dream Girls, Lion King. Um, uh, I actually, um, and then they're, they just did Waiting to Exhale and they used the soundtrack. So yeah, it was really good. Um, so there's a gentleman on there named Tyrone and he has, he's really good with the production side and Lion King turned out really well as well as Dream Girls. So um, those were actually, um, they're actually really amazing. Like I was actually like, oh wow, how did they get the music in there? Cause it's really hard, which you got to figure out because sometimes you can't play music or you can't hear it, but the way that they have really like produced, um, they meet in their own um, little like, rehearsal space because you can have a private room and then they brought this amazing production on Tuesday 
um, I know they're going to do another production of Hustle and Flow. So, yeah, that's going to be on Tuesday. So if you follow, if you're in Clubhouse and you follow me, I will ping you in the room. I don't know exactly where to go. Yeah. Well, you definitely ping me and I'm letting everybody know, probably if I'm not actively busy doing something else, I will be listening to that because that sounds fascinating. Um, I'm so curious about how they rehearse. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's in a private, it's in the private um, clubhouse space. So they're not meeting in person, but literally like they get the script and they meet in a private room because once the room is private, nobody else can join. Only, only those that you invite in. So they're meeting in a private space and they're holding rehearsals. Um, uh, so are there any questions from others in the space? I feel like a broken record, but like the thing that I'm so curious about with the production of musicals in the space, I assume that because there is no video component that it solves a lot of the latency issues, but is it like, no, is it actually like we've arrived? Like there's, it's like people are singing with music in real time, real time? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's still not hard. I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Excellent. That's really it. That was my only question. Yes, um, they are. They're singing in real time. And it's actually, um, so they hold auditions prior to that's another thing. Like, you'll see Clubhouse all of a sudden, like, because they can't handle everything, it shuts down. And it's because uh, so many people are in there, like, the auditions platform and audition space has been one of the craziest parts of Clubhouse is, like, when they're holding audition for these roles for the musical, and you have thousands of people in these rooms trying to audition for these roles, so, yes. Um, so I have copy pasted. So your, your web series is called Lowest Places Lost Time? Yes. And there are disclaimers there because of course we touch on subjects that are, um, very, you know, strong and they're like, we're speaking as a victim. So, you know, you're getting the language and everything that a victim is getting. So you're not getting any of the sugar coat there. Mm -hmm. Um, and each episode is about 10, 12 minutes, but at the end, we had a lot of people reaching out to us and we had some survivors of child molestation coming out to speak and tell their story. So there's like a whole interview of them as well. We did all of it on Zoom there in Pennsylvania and Texas. Um, so it, it was, um, yeah, it was, it was pretty good. Yeah, it was well, fun. Thank you for sharing that. Um, it, would you mind if we shared that in the Transmedia Facebook group? Just to No, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, um, like I said to everyone, drop your links in the notes. Visit the notes and drop your links. If you've got productions um, uh, that we can uh, visit um, that you've created in the past or are coming up in the future, drop those links um, because I'm stuck in my house and I want to come see your stuff. <laughs> um, who wants to get on the, the clubhouse? Is there anyone in the space that's like, I have a deep desire to get on clubhouse right now. Like I need, I need to, I need to get on clubhouse right this minute. It's really okay if people are like, I'm okay. I don't need to. Hey, Marvin. Yes. I have a question. Um, I thought the, you know, like the ability to sort of uh, decorate, maybe decorate the Abbeys and, and I'm interested in like what those could become um, and maybe like the potential of, of sort of imagining like a set design for, for within that. Um, Brianna, um, you mentioned, or so you've touched on, on sort of uh, the, the sort of abilities that Abbeys can become. Do you, can you mention any um, things you've witnessed where, where those have come into to play into the, into your, your experience? Yeah. So um, that, I mean, that has not been, I have not witnessed what you just uh you know stay so that's a good thing maybe if you can bring that to life that will be fun um but what I have witnessed is um again if there's a certain character or um like she said if you're going to be like a, a a piece of the set you could be on the stage and make the noise um you just literally change your picture out right now and they do that before the read um but that's as far as the Abbeys have gotten so far so Clubhouse is still being brand new and 
very much being developed and so they're still like in their development phase which is why they're sometimes having those issues where they shut down but it's yeah it's been actually i mean and it like she said it was originally to network but then again if you put in your profile what room what you want what what you want to get out of clubhouse it will link you to those type of rooms so if you're an actress first you'll be linked to all the rooms with the actors if you're you know so though it just it comes with whatever you put in your bio it that's how the algorithms are set up uh, I also want to name that I think that there's an interesting tension between owning your own space and creating cultural productions on somebody else's space. And those are different, right? So, you know, for the, so in, in, in some aspect, um, um, it, Zoom, this is my pro account of Zoom. It's my space and, and we're, we're, we're producing this. Um, in Clubhouse, I have questions about, um, if I make something on Clubhouse, who owns it? Um, in Clubhouse, I have questions about whose responsibility is it to keep the space accessible and safe? Um, I just, I have a lot of emergent questions for that space that's creating itself. But I also, I'll be honest, I'm real cynical. I've seen YouTube, I've seen Facebook. I see these spaces that have been created for capitalist purposes. And usually the main purpose of the space is to make a white man some money by generally profiting off of my presence and potentially my literal information. Um, and I, I to, so yeah, that's, that's, that's a thing that I keep in mind when I'm in all of these spaces, Clubhouse included. I was going to say that that has been a, a topic of discussion in a lot of rooms. I was just like, yeah, that's kind of, you know, and it, it's funny you say that. It was a whole thing last night. And yeah, it, it's true. It, it's true. And yeah, and, and that's the thing about creatives, right? Because these rooms aren't very diverse that are having all these productions all of a sudden. So it is all your minorities. It is all your urbans that are doing all of these productions, Lion King or Dream Girls. And these are the ones that have been making Clubhouse what they are. So after Lion King was produced, then it was like all these people flocked because being that Clubhouse was so exclusive at first, the celebrities were on there and you can literally talk to them like, you, you could be in the room with two or three celebrities and having a full conversation and getting real gems dropped on you. But then Lion King hit and it went like, it went viral. Like so many people were talking about it and so many people wanted these invites. But again, it's not, the rooms are not that diverse that you're seeing these productions happening. So that has been a definite topic of discussion. Well, it's also this wild thing of if I go to a theater, like if I go to the, um, what's the name of a theater? If I go to ACT San Francisco, there's an artistic director. And if I go to that space and I experience a piece of art and I'm like, what was this? Or if I go to have a, if I go to have a program in that building and it's a weird room, I'm holding the people who hold that space accountable. I'm finding that there's this weird disconnect where you can, where you can be the owner of Twitter and take no responsibility for toxic ecologies happening in Twitter. Like there are full, like I noticed in Clubhouse, there were folks who were labeling rooms. Let's have a conversation about trans identity. And really they were just trolls who wanted to pull trans people into there so they could harass them. It was horrible. And I'm like, wow, if any theater had rooms like that, people would stop going. But the magic of the digital space is that if some of us can make some fly stuff happen there, the rest of us get get inspired and we wanna make fly things happen too. Brianna, could you make sure to put in the notes specifically when we can connect with your table reads? Cause I think that that's, there's a difference y'all between uh, experiencing the fully produced musical and experiencing the really exciting space. Cause I actually, I don't know if you, it, I. I feel like I've seen you in a couple spaces in Clubhouse, but I definitely lurked in the table reads because I was like, oh, I just I love the um, the, the real time exchange as you were deciding what text to engage with and casting. It was very cool. Um, all right, my colleagues.
you, we've got our connections in the Discord. I will drop um, in the uh, link or in the chat, I will drop a, an invitation to the Discord in the chat. Um, and next week, we will be gathering at 10 a.m. because we're doing that thing where we're going 10 a.m. and then 1 p.m. so we can have some accessibility for our folks all over the country and with all of our different schedules. Um, so I'm going to close us out for today. If we're feeling all right with that, I'm going to close out our producing in pandemic session.